Welcome to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. Today, we're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway where we're at the N15 garage. This particular garage does all the weld repair of the cars and it's been here for a long time. We're here with a company called Indiana Oxygen and I want to introduce my friend and fellow baseball player to you. Wally, hey. great to meet you. Wyatt, well, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Hey, listen, this, this place is a museum in itself, and I'm going to have Wally describe a couple of things, but you know that we already do the weld repair here, but Wally can tell us a little more about the history of Indiana Oxygen as far as their involvement with the track. So, Wally, tell me how you got started or your grandfather got started. Well, as you know, the, uh, the Indy 500 started in 1911, and we weren't even in business at that time. We didn't start until 1915. But my grandfather and his brother had the Lozier Agency, and the Indianapolis 500 was to showcase Indianapolis-made cars. And the, uh, the Lozier was made in Detroit. The Marmon, that was given the official uh, first place finish in the first race, was made in Indianapolis. So they didn't have garages like we have here, or any garages at the time. So mm -hmm. when they would take the cars, uh, they would take them from wherever they stored them around the city, drive them out 16th Street, practice around the track and then drive them back home. And the Lozier was kept at my grandfather's agency. And so they were involved in the very first race uh, with timing and scoring and any odd job that they could do. And the story that my grandfather uh, claimed till the day he died was that the Lozier with Ralph Mulford driving was really the first winner of the Indianapolis 500, not Ray Haroon. That there was a crash in front of the scorer stand and that the uh, the scores did not give credit to the Lozier that went by. So before the accident, the Lozier was a half a lap ahead. After the accident, it was a half a lap behind, even though they were following each other. So um, that's my story, and we're sticking to it. Then about 1914, when World War I broke out, the automobile agency kind of took a nosedive, and my grandfather thought that this is a good time to get out of the industry, and he had an electrical engineering degree, and they went into the uh, electrolytic separation of water and uh, into oxygen and hydrogen, and that became the Indiana Oxygen Company in 1915. Uh, we are the oldest continuous accessory sponsor here at the Speedway. Okay. Now, today, uh, it looks like there's these bottles all over the place that have Indiana Oxygen. What do you provide to the track? Well, primarily uh, nitrogen. Uh, we also have other welding and shielding gases here in the garage, but the uh, red and green cylinders you see out there are it's all nitrogen. It's for the tires and to run the pneumatic tools and the air jacks, um, the activators that are on the race cars. Well, Wally, I want to thank you for inviting me in here. I've been here now 22 years, and it wouldn't be possible had you not invited me. Wyatt, if you quit coming, I'm going to quit coming. <laughs> well, that's a deal. All right. Nice Thanks. to see you. Thanks. Well, that's it for TIG time. Thanks for watching. I'm Mr. Tig.